Hey guys, Matt with Kayak Buddies. I've had a few people ask me about the FPV mounts. I haven't really put any video up about them. Not since I was able to, get to carry them from Australia. But FPV mounts, as you guys can see, they're, they're made well. I mean, they're stainless. There's no aluminum on these whatsoever. They are the HTPE plastic. And you'll kind of see right here, you know, the wing nuts kind of pull out and you'll be able to clamp this on roughly about a one inch or a 28 millimeter diameter shaft. Um, if you look close enough, you'll see the O-rings that kind of hold the wig nuts from backing out. I take those and save them for a, a rainy day. They don't, they don't, you'll lose them at some point. So I lock tight those and call it a day. Now, what's interesting on these is it does have the ability to pivot. Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. So imagine that being in the Hobie Drive, you still have the ability to move it up and down. So that is your locking mechanism right there at the bottom of the mount and that's your six inch bar that runs across the top but what's neat about it is that it allows you to pivot this now i don't know the reason behind that but assumingly you want to be able to pull the bow up but if i look at this you'd have to flip it around and mount it this way which is cool about the hobie you can go either either direction so assumingly you can actually pull up and try to get that nose up a little bit faster so you don't have to mount it in any particular direction what i do when i put them on is i let you guys figure that out so I always keep mine locked. There's really no point because you're not going to do a bow lift on it. Um, but you'll see everything is, is like I said, it's, it's good stuff. The stainless is good quality. I haven't had any problem with it pitting. Um, granted, you probably could make your own, but what's the point? Um, by the time you source the materials, tap it and all that, there's really no, no reason why to do that. Now this is the strap here that goes around the drive tube. So basically it sits like this. So if you think about it, it kind of hooks onto the bottom, just like that, and allows you to run the tube somewhat unlocked, I guess if you want to think about it that way. So in case you want to pull it up, it always will come back down. So in essence, it'll hook in here, right here, wrap around to the other side, and go around the drive tube. I'll show you what it looks like once I have the Hobie built. Here's one of the drop-ins I'm finishing for a client out of Hawaii. And you'll see that this is a 50cc uh, 2.0 roughly two horsepower, it's a little over two horsepower. Um, this is the smaller drive that goes into both the Vibe Shearwater and, uh, on, and Hobie systems. You know, I haven't had a Vibe Shearwater with one of these yet. I guess people don't want the Hobie stigma, but um, this is kind of the same thing. Now there will be a third leg coming up. Well, it's actually a second uh, drop in. It's gonna be a little bit taller for the pod guys. Because you'll notice right here, this area right here is in essence where that mount would go, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, once it's off there, I'll put the mount on. You have this full adjustment in here. Now I do leave this on. Commonly, that's the lock collar for the, for the uh, standard size ones. But I leave that on there just because you got to realize your prop is actually facing the opposite direction as the pull cord. You know, on, on a bigger system, a full length system that is. Uh, in this case, they're both facing the same direction because you're pushing this way and you're pulling this way. It's a little bit opposite, but nonetheless, I'd leave that on there in case there's a strike or if you want to bring it down to cover this back end. doesn't do a damn thing in my opinion, but looks cool. But um, I leave it on there, honestly, also because in case it happens to teeter up or you got your mount spun around for some odd reason, this is going to prevent it from really catching a bad angle. Again, have I had that problem? No, but why not, right? Just leave it on there and be done with it. So you'll see on this particular system, it has a shorter tiller. Normally I don't do that on the Hobies, but in this particular one I did, I shortened it by six inches. And I ran over here, of course, to stress relief around this. So when it does pivot down or you wanna kind of stick it in the front console, you know, have no issue with all the wires coming apart. It is tie wrapped on the inside as well, but it allows it to kind of just touch that knob and not have to worry about it wearing down here. All the new builds from this point forward will be that way. Remember, you can always turn that and even shorten this more. Somebody asked me today about shortening this really, really, you know, close. You can, because remember when the FPV mount is here, I'll show you in a minute, it's straight. It, remember, it's locked in a straight position. So you could really knock this down, take this out if you wanted to, make the tube smaller and really make it kind of a nub per se, but you'd have to definitely cut the cable and resolder it. But um, so in this particular one, I don't know if you guys can see in there, I always make sure I, I wrap it with a tie wrap, I log tied it, and I put marine grease in there just because. But uh, that's pretty much it. And that's, you know, disconnect if you want to pull the power head. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the FPV mount on, get this thing ready to ship for the client, and uh, I'll explain how it mounts on here. 
So as I mentioned earlier on the wing nuts, I'm going to go ahead and pull those O-rings off right now. I'm going to slide this off and kind of mount it near so you guys can see it. Most people mount it somewhat centered just to have a few inches of vertical play in there. Um, so I'm going to pull these off, mount it, explain why this thing should be locked straight and use your rudder as the guide, as the, the guiding mechanism on the engine. All right, let me get this taken apart and be back in a second. So if you guys look at the bracket, you'll see it's CNC'd. I mean, this is done right. The holes are perfectly aligned. And you'll see in the back of this, which I'll show you right now, that it actually has the bolt cutouts in there so it lays flat. So it's done properly. I would tell you if it wasn't. Plus, I wouldn't even use it, to be honest with you. But everything seems to be threaded right. I haven't had any issues with anything backing out. It is done right. It's simple and it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. And like I said, commonly I'm gonna mount it just like that on tube. I don't put anything in here. There's no reason to have to put you know grease or any type of rubber to keep it taut. Um, and we will go from there. So if you look at this, the wing nuts usually position pretty equal. If you look at the way they're kind of laid in there. Now I will tell you, don't crank on one before you tighten the others. You wanna do this kind of in a pattern kind of like what you would normally do if you're, you know, closing up something that requires certain tolerances. So what I do is I usually do both sides on angles. You can go around if you want to. It's fine. Snug them as you're going around. But they should look very similar just because the threads are all the same on the bolts. That is it. There's nothing difficult about it. It does not turn at all. If you snug these down, and you can tighten them down. Just don't wrench tighten them. Um, that's it. It is literally pinned straight now. So from that point, you'll see the O-rings are not going to be used. I usually put that in a piece of tape for you guys and I lay it inside of one of these plastic baggies just so we don't lose them. You never know. You may want to use them. But I always Loctite these. I won't Loctite them for a customer only because it's going to move up and down. But you'll see you can run the engine higher if you want to. But remember the cavitation plate here needs to run under the lower plane of the hull. You don't want that like you know having to push up against the hull. That would make no sense. You can run it lower. It's not a big deal because at the end of the day that's that's what you need in that clean water. So back here, like I was mentioning earlier, you could simply tie in the uh, the rubber insulator here, which kind of goes around. I don't want to stress this one out, but it wraps around the front. So basically it looks like this. It'll wrap around. I don't want to make it too tight, but it'll wrap around and then it'll apply to each side of these and that'll keep that super tight right there. And that's the end of the game, man. It's that simple, you drop it in. If you do run it on, you know, obviously unlock, you'll be able to move this. You, you can always shift this around if you want to lift the bow. But as I mentioned earlier, there's no reason to lift the bow. Remember, these are water displacement holes, so lifting the bow is pointless. And with this motor in the front position, it's like a front-wheel drive car. You don't want to turn on it. You don't definitely don't want to use it to turn when you have a rudder. So here's the finished product, guys. Another 50cc system, FPB mount, going to Hawaii. Right? If you guys do it an assembly on your own, make sure that pull cord is facing you, otherwise your engine is going to be 180 degrees off. Nice stainless steel prop, of course. Wouldn't have it any other way.